Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we have an interesting review in that we are reviewing a brand new turntable, Denon's DP450 USB. But what makes this so interesting is I'm not entirely sure who this turntable's for. So I know that that is a hell of a way to start a review, but I have to admit, I found the 450 USB to be a little bit confusing. On the one hand, it is a very stylish turntable from Denon and the top of the line turntable that they currently offer. But on the other hand, it packs a lot of features that on the surface may seem like something that you want, but in actuality, I question who they're for. The Denon DP450 USB, like I said, is Denon's top of the line turntable at $599 retail. Now, it looks an awful lot like another Denon turntable, the 400, the DP400 to be exact, and that turntable retails for $499. And the real difference between the two is the inclusion of a USB port and USB recording capability. That's right, the 450 USB can record your vinyl records onto a USB drive in either MP3 or WAV format at the touch of a button. And we're gonna to get to this in just a second. So I'm going to be reviewing the 450 USB. However, do understand that throughout this review, my impressions, the overall functionality of the 450 USB should be identical to that of the 400, which we will discuss in my conclusion. So like I said, the 450 USB is Denon's top of the line turntable and it is a looker in every way, shape and form. It is available in white or black. Denon sent me their gloss white model and I have to say I absolutely love the way the 450 looks. I love the way the 450 looks sans, I wish, <laughs> I wish it didn't have the USB input and the recording selection buttons on the front because I kind of feel like it mars the appearance of the otherwise sexy 450. Now, the 450 is a belt-driven design, but like many of the turntables we've been reviewing on this channel recently, it does have an internal speed control, which allows you to select between 33 and a third, 45, and even 78. And that is really cool because you can change the speed of the record without having to physically uh, touch or otherwise adjust the belt. And I love turntables like this because while being a belt design, they more or less act on a daily basis like a direct drive turntable. Another nice thing about the Denon 450 is that it has an S-shaped tone arm, not unlike the techniques that I reviewed on this channel earlier. And with that S-shaped tone arm, you get a removable head shell. And this removable head shell comes pre-configured with a moving magnet cartridge already pre-installed. The 450 USB does come largely assembled out of the box and that assembly and setup from unboxing to listening to music should take or could take as little as 10 minutes or less. And that, that makes the 450 a good buy for someone that is potentially new to the hobby or getting into it or someone looking for kind of a mid-range table, not a true entry level like the Audio-Technica table that I've reviewed on this channel, but nothing quite as esoteric or crazy, not crazy, as say a Project X2, which is much more of a mid-fi approaching those higher end kind of tables. So it really is. It is, it's an approachable table at a price point that has some competition, but isn't outside the realm of possibility. Now, along with having a pre-installed moving magnet cartridge, the 450 USB also has a built-in phono preamp, which Denon chooses to call an equalizer. Not sure why they do that, but it, nevertheless, it is a built-in phono preamp, which means you can connect this turntable pretty much to any piece of stereo gear, be it a preamp, receiver, integrated amp of any persuasion of virtually any age. If it has an RCA style input on the back of it, you can connect this turntable directly to it via its built-in phono preamp. Now, the preamp is defeatable. 
So you don't have to use it, in which case you can choose to use a third-party outboard phono preamp for potentially better sound or performance. What I will describe to you about the 450 USB sound here in just a moment is based on its factory configuration. That means using its pre-installed moving magnet cartridge as well as its phono preamp engaged. Now I did test it. I did test it with a variety of different cartridges. I did test it against all of the turntables that I have here in-house and I will be sure to point out those differences to you later in this review. But when I start to describe the sound, understand that I am talking about it's from the factory, out of the box performance. So how does it sound? <laughs> uh, in a word, the 450 USB is non-offensive. It's non-offensive, but it's not all that exciting either. And so it's one of these tables that if your musical tastes range wildly from say really, really well recorded uh, albums to maybe modern uh, pop records that are mastered from, you know, compressed digital files that are quite common these days, you're likely gonna have a very nice, smooth, unoffensive, unobtrusive performance through the 450 USB. It just, it's kind of vanilla. In a, in a weird way. And it's not that it's bad. It doesn't do anything wrong, but there's nothing particularly special that I can call attention to and say, hey guys, this is, this is something really, really interesting. Starting with the low end performance, let's talk about the bass. The bass is deep, but not particularly articulate. It, it has some nice weight to it, some nice heft, but it lacks a lot of impact, a lot of force and focus. The mid-range is warm, the mid-range is smooth and pretty much grain-free, but it too is a little bit kind of bloated in that it lacks that focus and that pinpoint um, kind of articulation and detail that you will find in other turntables in and around the 450 USB's price point. And the high frequencies are incredibly soft. They are. They're, they're airy, but they're soft. There's, that sparkle is non-existent, absolutely non-existent, out of the box with the installed uh, moving magnet cartridge. And so it just kind of lends itself to this sort of beige, vanilla presentation. And it's not that it's bad. It's not that it's, it doesn't sound bad, but it doesn't really engage and dynamics are rolled off. Soundstage is present, like there's, there's a orb of sound, but it really does lack, like I said, that focus. If there's something that this table is missing out of the box, it's focus. It, it really is lacking in definition, delineation, texture, and just overall focus. It's like all the broad strokes are there. All the broad strokes are there, and if you squint, like staring at a Monet, like if you squint, it starts to actually kind of come into focus. But if you step back and really look at it or really listen to it, you realize that it's just all a bit soft and it's just all a bit kind of vague. And so you have to ask yourself, like what type of listener are you when going into a table such as the 450 USB? Is like, is this going to, if you have records that are, that are etched and harsh and maybe poor recordings or very old recordings, then maybe something like this will be a godsend for you. But if you have properly mastered records, you listen to only 180 gram vinyl, blah, 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 all the, all the audiophile hi-fi buzzwords, then you're likely going to find the overall signature of this table to be incredibly uninvolving. And you're going to kind of wonder where all of that panache that people talk about when they describe vinyl records, uh, where that is. Um, it's just very polite, very smooth, and just very vanilla. But changing out the cartridge, changing out the cartridge, updating just the cartridge to the Ortofon 2M Red and then later the Ortofon 2M Blue changes the signature of this bad boy completely. 100% completely. And I will argue that with the Ortofon 2M Blue cartridge installed, 
The 450 USB sounds near as makes no difference uh, the same as say a Fluence RT85 or dangerously close to a Technique's uh, 1500 that I reviewed on this channel earlier. Now, again, that is changing things up and I, and I wanna stress that that means adding a bit of extra cost to the already relatively higher asking price of $599. But it is possible to coax more performance out of the 450 USB by simply upgrading the cartridge straight away. We must talk about the elephant in the room as it relates to the 450 USB, and that is the presence of its USB input and push button recording capability. Yes, I tested both the MP3 and WAVE capability of its USB recording, and no, I cannot play you sound samples because that would be a violation of copyright. I'm not interested in getting flagged. So if you don't like that sort of a thing or, or you want to hear samples for yourself, I apologize ahead of time. You're just going to have to kind of take my word for it. And here is my word on it. I don't know who this is for. I don't know what this feature is for. Uh, because the sound quality that you arrive at recording your record to a USB stick in either MP3 or WAVE is akin to, say, putting your cell phone in front of your speaker and recording it while it was playing back. It is that bad. It's not good. It's supremely easy. It is supremely easy. When they say it is one touch, ready to go, automatic, they are not lying. You put a USB stick in and you select either the MP3 or wave button and away you go. As soon as you drop the needle, it's recording and it records until the record stops or until you lift the needle or rip the USB drive out. It's that simple. So that on that level, recording or making recordings of your vinyl records in MP3 or WAV format for, I guess, posterity or portability uh, is easy. It's very, very easy. I just don't know why you would want to do this. I really don't. For a couple of reasons. One, a lot of records come with download codes enabling you to download an MP3 or some digital file of said record. Second, most of us have some type of streaming music account, even if it's the free version with ads in it, in which case those files are demonstrably better sounding than anything I was able to record to the USB drive on the 450 USB. So that leaves it as kind of like a gimmick. And the only time that I could see anyone, myself included, potentially, potentially wanting this feature is if I had a record that I know was out of print and very difficult to find, in which case it would enable me to potentially make a recording of it for posterity's sake or to just have it, save it for you know whatever purpose. But the quality is so bad and I, I don't know if even listening to it back would be that much of an enjoyable experience. So once again, it's one of those things where I'm like, it's cool and it's super easy to use, but at the same time, who is this for? And because it's present, A, it's right there on the front staring you in the face, which visually as a design whore myself, I don't like that. I wish I could not have to look at it, in which case, you're talking about potentially buying the DP400. Same turntable, no USB recording, and it saves you $100 straight away. And that $100 can immediately be put into a better cartridge like the Ortofon 2M Red or the Ortofon 2M Blue, which elevates the 400 and the 450 USB's performance to a whole other level. And by that logic, and since I don't particularly care for the USB, I have to say the 450 USB is a table I can't recommend, but the DP400 is a table I would say consider. 
The other confounding thing that I found about this, uh, the 450 USB, was its dust cover. It's weird. I mean, at first glance, when I took it out of the box and set it down, I was like, this is kind of cool. I, I kind of like this. It's different. I've never seen a dust cover like this. And then after getting over the initial shock value of its appearance, I realized the reason I've never seen a dust cover like this is because it's completely not functional. But even when I am using it to protect my investment, when I'm using it to protect the tone arm and, and cartridge and save it from dust and debris, or in my case, husky hair, uh, this dust cover does none of that because it's not closed on all sides. In fact, it only protects the turntable from above. It does nothing to protect the turntable or cartridge or stylus from the sides. So dust, debris, dog hair, cat hair, human hair is free to invade your cartridge, the stylus, at will because this dust cover is for show only. And I don't like that. I didn't care for that at all. Outside of those two caveats and the fact that I don't think the cartridge that ships with the 450 USB is particularly competitive at this price point, everything else about the turntable is absolutely great. The tone arm is fantastic. The removable head shell is awesome. Uh, it's easy to set up. The uh, inboard speed controls are wonderful. I love that it includes speed controls for 78. And it's just a nice looking table. Granted, mine was in white. I have not seen it in black except for in pictures, but even in black, it looks phenomenal. But at $599 retail, the 450 USB is a good table, but not a great one. And at that price point, it's not even that competitive with the competition. At $599, you can get a music hall classic. You can get a uh, Fluence RT85. You can even save money and get a U-Turn Orbit Special with built-in phono preamp and an Ortofon 2M Red or 2M Blue cartridge for less money. And all of those tables, in my humble opinion, outperform the 450 USB out of the box. Now, the 450 USB can be made to compete with those tables with some minor tweaks and adjustments, mainly to the cartridge. But if 599 is the top of the mark for your budget, 600 bucks, 500 bucks is your budget, then I would say you're better off buying the DP400 at 499 and immediately buying a new cartridge and enjoying it that way, as opposed to spending all your money and hoping for the best out of the box from this table. So there you have it, guys. That is my review of Denon's DP450 USB. It is a good table, not a great one, but with a little effort and maybe a little extra money, especially in the purchase of a new cartridge, it can be made Great, but I would love to know what you guys think. Is this a turntable that was on your radar? Is this one that interests you? What do you think of the USB recording feature? Do you have a turntable that already records or is this a feature you have been contemplating wanting for yourself? I would love to know what you guys think in the comments below. But yeah, so that's it. That is my review and likely the last review of 2019. I want to thank you guys so very, very much for coming along with me on this ride this year. It has been a whirlwind and 2020 looks to be even better. So I thank you guys so much. If you liked this review, please do hit that like button. And if it's not too much trouble, if you could subscribe, that would be awesome because it really does help this channel and help get the word out there and expose it to more people. This very well could be the last review of 2020. So if I don't see you or speak to you before then, happy holidays, safe travels to those of you that are traveling and happy new year. And remember, in the end, the only person that has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.